All right. Let me uh, bring out Ted Wilkie. Ted is an uh, Intel principal engineer and general manager of our graph analytics operation. Good morning. Good morning. You're looking much better than you were yesterday after you, you just got off the plane. <laughs> Ted got us staggered in here. You've got the, you've got the con. So, um, so Ted, um, you know, in this data society that we, we were just talking about, um, you know, what's it going to take to literally put data to work for us? Well, data can definitely work for us, Justin. Uh, one thing it can do for us is to uh, tell us about our relationship to the world around us, the people, places, and things in it. I'm sure many of us have heard the term six degrees of separation or less separate everyone in the world. And uh, that means that a chain of statements like uh, a colleague of a colleague of mine mm -hmm. uh, only six times would connect you to anyone on the planet. That's amazing. Yeah, Nine billion people and we're only six or fewer degrees apart. That's right. So you're only a few introductions away from meeting someone truly amazing beyond the group that you're already with. Mm -hmm. And Intel Labs is working hard to uncover the re hidden relationships within data, that type of relationship. OK. Tell us more. All right. So how are we going to accomplish this? Two words. Graph analytics. Does that help? Mm, not much. <laughs> All right. But I like graph. being a data explorer. Do you get a card? And yeah, a yeah, we'll do that. Okay. We'll, we'll go on a data exploration in a minute with my okay. uh, research scientist, Danny. So to analyze relationships, we want to use graph analytics. Mm -hmm. For machines to understand relationships in data, we have to organize the data. That means put it into a list, a table, a tree. Now, one particular way of organizing data in the new big data frameworks is into something called a graph. Uh, a graph, like the thing I produce for my boss from my <laughs> spreadsheet? Well, not exactly. So imagine it, the graph I'm talking about, Justin, is more like a web of points, where the points represent data, and the lines between the points represent the relationships between the pieces of information. Like so, you showed on that, on that earlier graphic. Yeah, exactly, just like the video. Okay. And you know, interestingly enough, the internet itself is a graph with web pages connected by links. Right. Mm -hmm. And the human brain can be represented by this type of structure sure. uh, with the neurons connected to one another. Right. Um, OK, so that's the graph. Yeah. What's the analytics piece? Yeah, the analytics piece, so the <laughs> second half of this. Analytics is data mining in the form of uh, the new graph search that was announced a few weeks by ago by Facebook, mm -hmm. and other powerful large-scale machine learning, those machines learning uh, on the graph structures, algorithms for that that we're going to talk about in a moment. And Intel is developing technology so that everyone can mine graphs of this sort using machine learning and data mining. OK, I don't have to be some quant at some big investment bank or no, something. No, we mean, we mean truly everyone, truly everyone. OK. You know, we're familiar with some of the, I guess, the initial analytics technology, yes. you know, things like Hadoop. It's based on map, uh, MapReduce. Uh, why can't we use those parallel programming models to do the kind of analytics you're talking about? That's a really good question. So when data can be chopped up into portions that each machine can, in a data center can independently process, uh, it works great. But MapReduce and frameworks like that don't do so well with webs of relationships mm. that we just talked about, uh, data that's not independent, independent of one another. And that means a lot of machines are going to be talking to each other continuously about the data. So that's, that's a, that has a performance cost and a storage cost. Absolutely. For structures like the one that we see here uh, with an individual connected to other people, and if we were to use MapReduce to put those people on individual machines, they all represent millions of people, possibly, mm -hmm. um, and create a bunch of independent problems, uh, that creates a, a, a problem. So what we see, for example, is a, a neighborhood, to make it independent, we have to put everything associated with that neighborhood of information on one server. Right. And we have to do that for every server for in the data center. Yeah. The work is very uneven because it depends on the structure of the graph. And not only that, but to parallelize the algorithms, we have to furthermore uh, replicate the information because people will show up in multiple neighborhoods. Sure. We're all right. part of different networks, groups. social yeah. networks and right. groups. Mm -hmm. So it, it does demand new approaches, including the construction of relationships, the analysis of the relationships, the storage, and the, and the queries on those relationships. 
So, are we ready to go on this exercise? Yes. Yes, okay, so here's the problem statement. Let's say you're in your favorite restaurant. Okay. And you see the famous comedian, actor, Zal Ben Son, and he's with uh, the retired basketball star, Michael Jordan, and you think that's really interesting, and you're excited about that because you've been wanting to get an acting job, so maybe Zal offers you a way into that industry. And so, you'd like to connect to the cloud using a tool to learn a bit more about them to see if you can leverage any of that information to your benefit. Okay. And so what we've gone ahead and done here with this search, this graph search tool here, is to, um, we put the entire Wikipedia encyclopedia, uh, which is a user created and edited encyclopedia with four million topics, onto our service. You can hear them. Yeah, you can hear the there. There's the loudest back. ones right. behind the stage. And we've analyzed all the relationships with them, within them by building a graph of the sort we just talked about. Amazing. All of Wikipedia. Yeah, all of the entire Wikipedia wow. set. We're going to analyze it in real time here. Whoa. And we can ask powerful questions like, you know, about the categories of Wikipedia. What do we know about Zal Ben Shun? So you can see here, that we've, all, we've just run this search. And Zal, we know he's from Teeling. We know that he's a, a Chinese film director. And, a, and he, he's a comedian actor. Well, we can ask the same question of Michael Jordan. So we can ask, you know, what do we know about Michael Jordan? And see if there's any obvious connections between the two that we could use. And so if you take a look at, at this, Justin, Whoa. look at all those categories. <laughs> yeah. Do you see Michael. anything that's obvious and common between these two individuals? Actually, I can't see. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot to look at, but I can tell you that there isn't anything obvious. It's a, a lot about sports and Michael yeah. Jordan play golf and things like that. <laughs> But as a data explorer, you persist, and we have more powerful tools. Okay, so, so you know, given the fact they don't seem to have any common interests, where do we go from here? Yeah, we ask more powerful questions. So we're going to ask, how are Michael Jordan and Zal Ben Shan related? And see if we can analyze that. So we're looking for the shortest path between them in this giant graph that we've created. And, and I, again, I want to emphasize, this is running real time. This, this is running real time. Not some stored uh, no, program. No, we're going to analyze all the possible connections between them in real time and find the most direct one that can explain that, them sitting in this restaurant together. And so what you can see is that Michael Jordan, amazingly, is related to the Chicago Bulls basketball team drafts to Carl Lewis, who's related to Chen Yuling, a famous uh, runner who was in the Olympics for China, is related to Zhao Binshan from the same city. In the same town. And so with that information, who knows? What's interesting is they're only two degrees of separation away from each other. And more amazingly, Justin, our friend operating the system knows Chen Yuling, so they're only one degree of separation from Zhao, who they want to get a job. I'm just for. amazed you were able to do it so quickly. I mean, analyzing that massive amount of data. It is really fast. You know, this would be really <laughs> slow on a traditional da database because you have to create indices for every possible conceivable query. But we've been working with the Intel Science and Technology Centers for Cloud Computing mm -hmm. that's hosted at Carnegie Mellon University right. and developed tools like Intel Graph Builder that allows <laughs> anyone to build large-scale graphs and do this type of analysis. And uh, working with our, our partner, uh, Carlos Gestrin, Professor Carlos Gestrin has developed a tool called Graph Lab for machine learning. We're going to show you a little bit of that, too. OK. Let's do it. So <clears throat> we go back to Michael and Zhao. The question is, what can we do with the inside? It's hard to see what we can do with this. We want to make it actionable. But since we know Chen, we text her and we ask, so you know, do you have any advice for us? And she replies immediately, well, she was told a story that another aspiring actor once sent over a nice uh, dish to the table and got a good result, and, and Zhao was very pleased with the gift. And so she suggests you do that, but she also gives you a warning that he's very particular about whether he likes noodle dishes or rice dishes. Oh, yeah. Don't ever try that on me. <laughs> yeah, so we might be a little bit stuck here. OK. And so perhaps graph analytics can help us. But this isn't a cliffhanger. You're not going to leave me till next Saturday. No, perhaps I won't. <laughs> OK. So the question is, can we use graph analytics to figure out Zhao's preferences to send over the right gift? Well, sometimes it's interesting. If we look at this graph that we've constructed out of Wikipedia, we look back at the golden path relating Michael and Zhao, they're connected to many other communities and people around them. Mm -hmm. Sure. And this is where machine learning can help. Large-scale machine learning can help us 
using algorithms like something called belief propagation, which is exactly what it sounds like. How does that work? Well, we could try to accurately predict Zhao's preference. And the way it works is, you see there are colors around the path with other people. We don't know Zhao's, he's gray and Michael, but the other people we know, some prefer noodle dishes and some rice. And depending on their relationship to these, to Zhao, we may be able to predict accurately what he prefers. Okay, so uh, I'm getting hungry. What's the, what's the decision? What's the recommendation there? Well, when we hit this calculate button, we're going to immediately our machines will <laughs> pass millions of messages and determine in real time that Zhao would prefer maybe a, a fish noodle dish over a rice dish 86% of the time. So that's what we send over to the table. Okay. And I guess the last question is, what does all of this mean for data explorers like myself and the data explorers we have here today? Well, what it means is, for data explorers like you, Justin, that when they go on their expeditions like this, they'll be able to do this on their own data, and Intel will be there with powerful big data tools to help them out with graph analytics. All right. Well, it looks like graph analytics is something here to stay. Am I right? I think so. We've got uh, a number of surprises coming. Well, good luck in all your future research. Thank you, Justin. Right? I know there's going to be many exciting developments along the way. Thanks again for being here. Thank you. Ted Wilkie, everybody.